Hi everyone, Stepan here. It's Saturday, so we are going to continue the Bobby Fischer series. And we are continuing with his 1955 US Junior Championship. Uh, in round one, we saw his defeat in the classical Sicilian. In round two, he faced William Whistler. Uh, I'm not sure how strong this player is. I couldn't find the rating anywhere. Bobby Fischer was 12 years old and about 1800. At least that's what's well, that's what's considered to be true after his US Amateur Championship played the same year. And this was a King's Indian. It was extremely complicated. And I, I thank you, Vieco, sorry for the digression. A friend of mine, a uh, Croatian national master, gave me great feedback yesterday about my analysis and about why I don't use the engine and that I should use it. So from now on, uh, I'm not going to use the engine to prepare my videos, same as so far. But in the end of the video, I'm going to turn on the engine and check my analysis. So I hope I hope that helps, and I hope that's going to uh, eliminate the mistakes I made, or at least correct them. Uh, okay, so so let's get into the game. So as I said, Fisher was 12. His opponent played pawn to d4. We have knight to f6, c4, g6. Now this could still be the Grunfeld uh, after knight c3 with d5 or the King's Indian. Fisher, of course, played the King's Indian throughout his career. And we have e4, uh, d6, and now his opponent plays f3. This could also come from a different move order, but this is the, the Samish variation. And the idea behind the Samish is to create a strong center which can never be attacked or undermined easily. Of course, in exchange for that, you get development issues. So, of course, there's no easy way to develop this knight without blocking in this bishop. So, white will usually go for knight e2, uh, knight to g3, and then develop the, the bishop later. Black, in turn, has to try and attack the center very early on, so the usual plan is c5, that's one of the main ways to, to break open this position, and uh, to that, white usually responds with d5, closing off the center. And there can be a couple of types of positions from here. The usual type of position is where black pushes on the kings on the queen side, excuse me, and tries to play for a6, b5, or tries to play a5, a4 to block in the queen side. Then you could also have positions with pawn to e5, which are more similar to normal king's Indians, where black is going to try to undermine the center further with c6. And then we have positions with c5 and e6, undermining the center after c5, d5, e6, which resemble the Benoni defense very much because there's this pawn structure with d6 and c5, and black will usually go for a6 and b5. So Fischer castles in this position, and now there are three main moves. Uh, bishop e3 is the main line, uh, and after bishop to e3, black continues with c5, breaking open the center. Uh, white, of course, doesn't want to take. That would make the position sort of equal. Uh, and instead he plays knight g to e2, and then knight to c6, d5, closing the position off, and knight to e5. Now note that f4 loses the c4 pawn, even though you would like to play it. In these Benoni-type structures, this is similar to the old Benoni, where the pawn is still on e7, uh, and, and black hasn't played e6. Uh, and in all Benoni variations, usually white wants to go for f4, e5, or e5 without f4. In this case, since the pawn has already been developed to, to f3, then that's sort of less efficient. So white continues with the move knight g3, etc, etc. Uh, the, other, the other move is knight g2, e2 immediately, after which black again plays c5, we have d5 and e6, and this is going to be a Benoni type structure in which I believe white's game is sort of weird. Black is playing a normal Benoni, white is playing a hybrid of different openings with this very solid pawn center. But he will have to worry about a6, b5, he will have to worry about black taking on d5 and then using the e file. So I believe this is a pleasant pos position for black. And in the game, uh, Mr. Whistler played the move bishop g5, which is the Steiner attack, the second most popular move in the same-ish. And now again, Fischer doesn't play the main line, he played knight bd7. I believe since he was young, he wasn't as familiar with sideline king's indians, although based on everything I know that has to be wrong, but he didn't play the thematic move here. He played in normal king's indian fashion with knight d7, e5. Usually against this you play the move c5, trying to attack white center immediately and after d5 you again go for the Benoni type of structure with pawn to e6. 
And now white plays queen d2, it's not really to castle queenside, you don't want to be castling queenside here, that would be too risky, because black wants to play a6, b5 anyway, and the usual way to stop that, for example, when black prepares, prepares b5 in the Benoni with a6, you play a4, uh, whoa, excuse me, you play a4, and if your king is on c1 or b1, then this is just crushing, you, black would just sacrifice a pawn and, and break through. So you play queen to d2 to put pressure on this diagonal on the square h6 and to exchange this bishop which is very strong, the Benoni bishop is always a monster. Uh, and in this position ed5, cd5, a6 preparing b5, a4 stopping b5, rook e8, and you can see that the, that black's position is great here. Of course the Benoni is double-edged, of course the Benoni is not a pleasant opening and one mistake could cost you the game, but for the moment I think black's developed pieces are better than white's undeveloped pieces. And you could go for knight e7, you could go for b5, and I think it's okay. Instead of that, uh, knight bd7 was played, which isn't a bad move, but it's not the thematic way to play this position. This is kind of different to the normal king's indian. Queen d2 played, and now e5. And again, you can break with e5, it's not bad, but c5 is more common. d5. Now Fischer continues with a5, which is very positional in nature, trying to prevent b4, uh, because white against the king's indian, if you know the bayonet attack, white plays b4, c5, and normally in the king's indian, black wants to attack on the king side, so play moves like knight h5 and f5. Here, firstly, it's very hard to do because your, your knight is pinned to the queen, but even so, Fischer seems to be going for a kingside attack somehow, and he is expecting white to play in a normal anti-king's Indian fashion with b4, c5, undermining his center. So he plays a4. A more thematic move here, a principled move, would have been to play c6, just attacking this pawn chain straight away. And now after something like rook c1, uh, you can exchange on d5, c takes d5. Now you can play a5, excuse me, not a4, a5. Uh, because now you're stopping b4 for a specific reason to give your knight the c5 square, and then you could continue with bishop d7 and b5, b4. And in this case, if you manage to play f5, then this d5 pawn is going to be terminally weak. And again, white's development seems to be lagging a bit. But okay, a5 played instead. White continues with h4, which... Uh, I, I don't know what the engine will say about this. One thing about the engines in the King's Indian is they say that white is winning, or winning plus one, plus one and a half, plus one point, point two, at least plus point five, uh, until white makes one move that the engine doesn't like, and then the evaluation changes. Now, h4, I think, is a very natural move because it prepares h5. Uh, and also g4 can simply be played. So this reminds me sort of of a kingside setup in the in the dragon, a Sicilian, and except for this bishop. And you're basically just trying to break through to the king. Also, sometimes instead of uh, knight e2, knight g3, you want to play knight h3, which is now better because the pawn is not blocked. And knight e2 now doesn't make too much sense because you want to play g4 to continue your attack. Now Fischer in this position reacted with knight c5. I think h5 seems necessary. I, I think h5 is necessary, but even so, I, I think white manages to break through. I was analyzing the move g4, and I couldn't see anything better than h takes g4 and f takes g4, and now knight c5. The idea is to put pressure on the g4 pawn, queen g2 defending g4, and now queen d7. And the pawn doesn't really fall, you can play bishop f6, bishop f6, g5, bishop g7, and then h5. And I think I think white could win this, I'm not sure what the engine is going to say, but this seems, this seems very very good for white. I, this bishop is still bad and I, I don't see any counterplay for black, b5 is prevented. So after h4, maybe h5 doesn't work, if you play h6 then white just takes the pawn. I also, maybe knight h5, of course, even if it did work, if the queen wasn't pinned, then I, I don't think you get much. Just g4, knight g3, and then rook h2, knight takes bishop, king takes bishop, still white, white has a strong attack. So knight c5 played by Fischer, and knight g2 by white, uh, maybe knight h3 is better. Definitely 
uh, g4 is is better and you have to try and go for the attack if you already went for it so let's say black continues with c6 trying to give himself at least some breathing room breaking open the center now h5 black shouldn't touch that pawn if white exchanges then fine you could get mated but okay so takes and i believe you should take with the f pawn putting pressure on f3 and giving yourself options of lateral defense of of the of the h7 pawn so for example is if queen h2 then you play queen d8 or or queen c7 uh, queen d7 or queen c7 perhaps so that if bishop takes knight you have bishop takes and and the pawn is defended i don't know still looks scary so after knight c5 i think g4 and and h5 was very very good uh, instead of that knight g2 played which is kind of slow and another thing i already mentioned you don't really want your knight on g3 h5 and f5 are protected and you want to play g4 so, so i i don't understand knight g2 except for mere development okay now fisher plays bishop d7 again i think h5 would have been better to uh to either block the position or simply c6 trying to trying to break the center okay bishop d7 now again h5 or g4 for white seems seems crushing if i had to guess i would say the engine thinks white is better much better or winning okay knight g3 played a sort of redundant move and now h5 now h5 is actually good and after knight g3 h5 i think that the situation sort of changes because h5 is an anchor for for white to attack and since you don't have g4 now then h5 is a great move stopping counterplay bishop e2 okay develops the bishop uh queen to c8 getting away from the pin that's fine exchanging the bishops that's also i, I think okay now rook f1 now rook f1 prepares the move f4 and i think this is again uh, misunderstanding of the position you don't really want your rook on f1 your rook is great on h1 you want to move this knight away and play g4 in, in which case the rook on h1 is, is perfect so it is probably something like queen g5 or trying to increase the pressure on even or even knight f1 just bringing the knight back and let's say c6 g4 i think white needs to go for that with rook f1 queen d8 played uh, putting pressure on the h4 pawn which is not really a subtle threat and white now castles queenside uh, which seems risky in light of in light of b5 but for the moment b5 is defended okay knight e8 and and here is why i think fisher plays knight bd7 and d5 at the start of the opening you can here you can see that he is still going for the king's indian plan of f5 and trying to attack on the king side there is no king here and f5 may be a sound pawn break positionally because and strategically because you will give your pieces breathing room but tactically it doesn't really work and also what happens if white doesn't take what happens if the pawn just remains over there so i i don't know also if if white does take then we are going to see that white gets a key square in the king's indian the e4 square which is usually very hard to get because you have a pawn on e4 and after f5 and e takes f5 or f takes e4 usually white's c3 knight jumps into e4 and it's one of the best pieces on the board and now funnily enough <laughs> white plays rook h1 which i agree with so white sort of wasted a couple of tempi with knight g3 and rook f1 and rook h1 and he should probably move the knight away and okay and fisher plays f5 which is in my opinion just suicide i don't know what the engine will say but this seems suicidal so in this position e5 played and bishop f5 and knight f5 and rook f5 and now here are the two reasons why f5 is 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 such a dangerous move to play and such a big mistake firstly if this knight ever moves knight e4 is going to be deadly you have the g5 square you have pressure on f6 d6 that means that c6 cannot be played easily that means that if the f file opens your rook coming to f7 is going to be deadly i mean it's just horrible the second reason you just allowed g4 with tempo which is a move white should have played 10 moves ago so now finally g4 okay rook f4 doesn't retreat gh5 gh5 and yeah rook dg1 this may be the case of the wrong rook i don't really care about this pawn 
it's already double attacked, so Black could take it if he wishes to at some point. I think Rook H to G1 would have been more precise, but probably he's going to double on the G file, so may not be relevant. King H8. Now I wonder if there was an opportunity to run away to safety, and I was analyzing stuff like King F8 and eventually playing B6 and getting your king to B7, but it just seemed too slow. Now here are two, two attacking plans I was looking for, for white. I was trying to make two things work. The first thing, get my rook to g5, double rooks. Second thing, get my bishop to d1 and to c2 and my queen to d3, or just get my bishop to, to c2 without being exchanged and trying to play for something like queen e1, knight e4, exchange the knights and then get my queen to e4 if this rook should move. But definitely getting my bishop here and definitely doubling up my rooks. So king h8 played by Fischer, and uh, in the game queen c2 was played, which gets the queen to a great diagonal, okay, but the queen could have entered the position many, many different ways, and I think this square is required for the bishop, so I think bishop d1 was the key move, and here's what black has to do. Black has to get his knight out of the way, has to get his queen out of the way, and then has to get his a8 a rook into play. If white doubles rooks and plays rook g7, then you take it, you give your queen away for two rooks. So that's not something we should be afraid of. We need to defend the h5 pawn because it's going to drop with check. So knight f6, and bishop to c2, and queen to e7. And now rook to g6 or rook to g5, I think. I, I couldn't see a difference between the two. Uh, okay, maybe the difference is that if I play rook g5, white will be forced to give up his bishop or block the block the long diagonal. So if, if I go for... Uh, okay, no, 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 that doesn't work because the h5 pawn drops. So I think rook g5 is okay as well. But let's say let's say rook to g6, just not giving any tempi. And rook to g8, trying to exchange, fine. And rook to h6, check, trying to decline the trades as, as, as for as long as possible, and knight h7. And when I was analyzing this position, I thought that white just wins. And you, you don't have an easy way to double your rooks. That's true. But there's so much pressure on this on this point here, and obviously White could get the the queen for uh, for the queen and knight for rook and bishop, which is winning. So this this is just bad. So let's say instead of rook g6, uh, instead of rook g6, rook g8. What do we do? I don't know. This plan with with bishop d1, bishop to c2 just seems crushing instead of queen c2. I think getting the bishop here is key, and there's basically no way to prevent the rook coming uh, to to g6. Okay, now I know why I wanted to play rook g6 because the knight is defending h5. I'm sorry. And the other plan instead of what Whistler played, queen c2, uh, was to simply go for rook g6 straight away, and knight f6 again defending h5. Rook h to g1 and queen to e7. And now if, if rook g7, then you take. And if rook to h6, knight h7 is not as scary now. Rook to, rook to h6, knight h7, because bishop d3, you can just take it. So bishop d1, bishop c2 is necessary. So again, after, after queen to e7, I think bishop d1 again. And let's say rook to g8, trying to, to trade off. Rook h6 check, and here knight h7, uh, rook takes g8, excuse me, knight h7, rook takes g8, king takes g8, uh, queen to g2. I couldn't see a clear win. I think king h8 is necessary, and now something like bishop c2 and rook f7 seem, seems okay. But it, it seems okay means it doesn't lose immediately. I'm going to check this with an engine uh, after, after we finish the game. But in the game, White played queen c2, which takes away the square for the bishop. And Fischer played a really weird move. Instead of knight f6, which defends g8, and which is not attacked by the rook, he played knight g7, which defends h5, doesn't defend g8, and the rooks attack g7. And also, if anything comes to, to h7 or g6, or the queen could come to g6, then the knight is double attacked. So I don't understand knight g7. Okay, in the game, uh, queen g6 was played. I think rook g6 is better. Getting your rook into play first, your 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 h1 rook 
first. So, for example, rook f6, trying to trade, rook a g1. Now, you could, uh, you could take, but I'm going to take with my queen, and either you will be forced to defend. So, for example, takes, queen takes, and for example, queen e7, bishop d1. And I'm going to play bishop c2, and it's not easy for you to, to trade off queens. If you try queen e8, then I take the knight. If you move the knight, I take on h5. So I think this would have been losing. So after rook g1, rook f7, uh, defending, and rook h6 check, king g8, queen h7 check. Seems scary, but I couldn't find the win. Something like king f8, rook g2, g6. Seems incredibly crushing, but... But b6 is just a random move I played because eventually I want to get my king to b7. So knight e4, knight takes e4, f takes e4, queen takes h4, and it seems that black is getting a ton of counterplay. I could win the a8 rook, but then you win my bishop and you have a perpetual check. So I think this line should end in a draw. Instead white played queen g6, uh, queen of 6 by Fischer, and white accepts the queen trade straight away queen f6 rook f6 and here they agreed to a draw which is unbelievable i mean white's position was just perfect black's king was dead and and white agreed to a queen trade just like that okay so what i want to do now i'm going to turn on the engine and we are going to start at the move f5 so Okay, let's enable the engine. Okay, let's see. I'm actually going to try to move the evaluation bar a bit so that you can see it. Okay, I hope this is better. Okay, okay, so now you can see the evaluation bar on the right side of the screen. Oh, okay, so what the engine wants to do instead of Instead of f5 is a4, locking down the queen side, going for rook a6, which is a nice rook lift for rook b6, putting pressure on b2. And the position is perfectly balanced, it's equal. Which I, I can understand because knight g3 was played. Let's just have a look at the position before knight g3. Okay, so bishop d7, yeah. Bishop d7 plus 2 for white, and after knight g3, yeah, plus 0.6. Okay. Okay, now, after rook h1, equal after f5, plus 2.5, plus 3, plus 3.2. My god. Okay, so I gave you two reasons why f5 is bad. I had no idea it was this bad. It's plus 3 already. So let's see their play. So e f5, bishop f5, knight f5, rook f5, yes, and g4. And this position is plus okay my pc my laptop is slow and i don't know if this engine is is good it says depth 20 now and the position is plus point plus two and a half okay rook f4 gh gh rook dg1 is better okay okay king f8 i was trying to make that work Okay, rook g5, and I'm running away. My idea was just to run away. Because the knight is still covering uh, g7. So it actually would have worked. It says plus 4. But for humans, I think this would have been easier. So let's say I take the pawn and, and the king runs away. Plus 3.5. Yeah, okay. Uh, king h8, what Fisher played is plus 5. Jesus. <laughs> okay. So the engine likes bishop d1 and rook g6, which I, I agree with. It also plays king b1, which I don't understand. I don't understand king b1. King b1 probably in these variations where the queen takes on h4 and then plays queen e1 check or queen h1 check. I still don't understand king b1. Okay, uh, so let's just check the analysis of bishop d1. I thought that was just crushing. So bishop d1, queen f6. I don't understand queen f6. Where, where is the knight going in that case? Okay, bishop c2. Ah, we just take on f3. Okay. Ah, so queen f6 is a smart move. So that you, you prevent bishop c2. So let's say I don't play bishop c2, I play rook g5. 
And now queen f7, and what if I double my rooks? Where does the knight go? And now the knight goes to f6. Okay, but now I can play bishop c2. Okay, that's a very nice idea. I I wouldn't have seen that in a million years. It says plus one and a half. Okay, so that, that's a nice defense against bishop d1. So bishop d1 it, oh, isn't as crushing. Let's look at, look at rook g6. After rook g6, knight f6 is, is, six is correct, and the engine prefers bishop d1. Okay, now it says rook h to g1, and queen to e7, so this analysis is correct. And then I was looking at rook g7, where black just gives up the queen, or bishop to d1, and rook to g8, rook h6, knight h7, rook takes, king takes, yes, this seems plus, plus 5. Seems just deadly. Okay, now king h8 was my analysis. Bishop c2, rook, whoa. Rook f7, queen g5. And queen g5, the idea of this move, I didn't see this move. The idea is if, if black exchanges, then you get a pawn to g5 and you just advance. Yeah, this seems deadly. Okay, in the game, queen c2 was played, and now it's plus 1.3. So, not that great. And Fischer didn't develop his queen. He didn't play knight f6. He played knight g7. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Plus 5. Okay. I mean, th this is understandable. Knight g7 doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, you, you give him a target on the g file. Okay. Queen g6. Yeah. And queen g6 very close to equal. Plus 1.2. The continuation I was looking at was rook g6, which makes sense. And now rook f6. And rook hg1 and rook f7. Yeah. Okay, that's that's just crushing. Rook h6. King g8. Why did I think it was a draw? I was looking at... Uh, okay, so I'll show you my line. So I was looking at queen h7 check, king f8, rook g to g6, b6, how <laughs> b6 is the best move? Knight e4, knight e4, f4, queen h4, and queen h8 check. Okay, and I concluded that this was a draw, and it is a draw because it's a perpetual check, but why was it winning? What did I mess up? So wait, here it's still winning for white. I don't understand this. So why couldn't black... Aha, okay, there's no perpetual when there's still a knight on e4. So you take, and after white takes, then it's perpetual. But what could white have done instead of that? Okay, this is weird. Now it says it's equal again. Okay, but in this position, a few moves earlier, it says that it's completely over. Now I, I played b6 just to get my king to safety. And now let's not play knight e4, trading pieces. Okay, king c2 is a very engine-like move, but it makes sense. This is it's not hard to see how, how to break through here. Okay, I'm going to turn off the engine. I, I think I got everything I wanted. Sorry for the mistakes in my analysis. Uh, but I, I will always analyze the games without an engine. I, I will check with an engine at the end of the video. Do let me know what you think about that. Okay, I don't know. How does black win here? A uh, white, excuse me. Okay, so let's play a random move for, for black. Oh, that's nice. Okay, knight b5 is nice. What's the idea behind rook g5? Why does black give up his queen? Why does black give up his rook? I don't understand. Do you have to play queen d7? Why would I give up my rook? Why would I play queen d7 or queen takes rook? 
Well, why can't I just play a3? Okay, I give up the e4 square. Okay, now let's not play a3. Let's play something. Let's play rook b8. Okay. Whoa. I still don't see how to break through. Yeah, okay, now I see it. Now you take this pawn and you just double up on the rook. Okay, okay, now I see it. I mean, it's, it's still not, it's not a trivial win. Okay, so Fisher's US Junior uh, in 1955, his first one started with a loss in round one. Round two, he drew. We're going to look at the next games starting next Saturday. Uh, sorry about my mistakes again. I hope to reduce them, eventually eliminate most of them when I become better. Uh, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.